Hello soon to be licensed nurse practitioners, Ms. Cohen here, and today we're going to be going over pediatrics part A. The first thing we're going to talk about is newborns and failure to thrive. Now let me bring to your attention the graph you see in front of you. It's a growth chart, which are standard at pediatrics checkups. They show how kids are growing when compared to other kids of the same age and gender. It also shows a pattern for that child's growth, weight, and head circumference. And it's important because you use this to determine if there is failure to thrive. By definition, failure to thrive is when the baby is not gaining weight at the expected rate. The weight for their age falls below the third or fifth percentile on a growth chart or there's a major decrease in weight between percentile lines such as the 90th, 75th, and 50th. So, every checkup, the um, doctor will measure the head circumference, the height, the weight. Uh, so, there's one chart for each. So, one chart for the head circumference, one chart for the weight, one for the height. So, with every visit, you plug in the result for that visit as a dot. So when you compare every visit, you can follow the dots. The idea is that the dots will follow one of those lines that you see in the chart. It's supposed to follow that curve. It may go slightly above that curve. It may go under that curve. But what you want to make sure is that it doesn't drop way below that either that line or outside of the actual entire curve, or it doesn't go way above. So for example, my child, when he was born, he was already off the charts. He was big, long, and big head. And the head became an issue because as you see the curvature, his head was already outside the entire curve, the maximum, what we call the 99th percentile. He was way above that. And then with the next office visit, he was even higher, meaning the head was even bigger. And it's a concern because it's not normal. So in this case, they were concerned with hydrocephalus. They asked me to come back one more time, and if it was even higher, then they were going to refer me to a specialist to check for this. Well, the good news is that it kind of plateaued, and then everything else started meeting where it was supposed to. So with each additional visit, things were starting to normalize, thank God. But that's why this is important. The same thing applies for uh, length, and the same thing applies for weight. Um, a good question on the exam would be, what would you tell a parent when you recognize that this child's weight falls under the third and fifth percentile. Is this good? Is this bad? Clearly, this is bad. It means that third or fifth percentile of the children for that age, for that gender, uh, should be at that range. So they're underweight, hence failure to thrive. Now, causes of failure to thrive include insufficient calories, such as mixing formula incorrectly, diarrhea, malabsorption, such as celiac, cystic fibrosis, food allergies, poor maternal bonding, frequent infections, and poor breastfeeding. But at the hospitals, they do a really good job at teaching mothers the latching, making sure the baby's drinking, okay? Um, and remember, anything highlighted on the Cohen Review Green, I like to call it, such as the note, Newborns are expected to lose up to 5% formula fed and 7 to 10% breast 7 to 10% breastfed of their birth weight during the first week of life. Anything on the Cohen Review Green, it's very important that you write down and visit again and again and again. Okay, keep that in mind. That's a good test question right there. What's the expected weight loss because they may give you a question and say this child lost 15% that's not okay for either breastfed or formula fed. But if it's within what they're expected to, then no big deal. Then for uh, newborns, we have Down syndrome. Down syndrome trisomy 21 is a genetic disorder that causes unique facial characteristics, such as, check out the green, Cohen Review Green, round flat face, upward slanting eyes, lower set of ears, chronic mouth is open, macroglossia, glossia tongue, macro large, short neck, and broad hands with transverse palmar creases. So an exam question may describe these features. 
and you're supposed to po you're supposed to point out what could it possibly be in this case would be down syndrome all right newborns may have hypotonia poor morrow we'll talk about reflexes later very important for the exam um, over 50 percent of them have congenital heart defects congenital hearing loss visual problems cataracts sleep apnea and early alzheimer's all right education this is a big one due to the weak neck you have to avoid anything that could break the neck such as trampoline or high risk sports that can cause head neck or spinal cord injury football soccer gymnastics now remember the exam is very very big at um, you making sure you do your patient education right um, so this is a big one for you to remember so again what stands out about down syndrome is that flattened nose that's key all right uh, spe specifically the bridge of the nose uh, could also be described as almond-shaped eyes that slant up, uh, short neck, short ears, the tongue that tends to stick out, the mouth is open, tiny white spots on the iris, on the colored part of the eye, uh, and then a, that single line across the palms, the palm or crease, it's also a big giveaway. Then we have fetal alcohol syndrome medical condition that occurs due to the mother consuming alcohol while she's pregnant. So characteristic, characteristics include micro tiny cephaly head, narrow eyes, epicanthal folds, and a flat nasal bridge, thin upper lip. That's a big one for uh, alcohol syndrome, the thin upper lip and no vertical groove above the upper lip. The, they're talking about this groove that we have on the upper lip here. So that tends to be smooth. Uh, underdeveloped ears, mental retardation to mild developmental defects, attention deficit disorder. Education, clearly tell the mom, please don't drink when you're pregnant. This is a picture to show you what we discussed. Pay attention to the small eyes, the exceptionally thin upper lip, um, and the short upturned nose, smooth skin surface between the nose and the upper lip, uh, they may also have deformities to the joints, limbs, and fingers and show physical growth, uh, slow physical growth, pardon me, before and after birth. These people may also have vision issues, unfortunately. Cryptochidism, also known as undescended testicles. Please pay attention to the terminology as they may say to you cryptochidism and not describe that it's undescended te testicles and it's your job to know the terminology. It is actually estimated that about one in every 25 uh, boys that are born um, have undescended testicles, but in most cases, no treatment is necessary as the testicles will usually move down in the scrotum naturally during the first three to six months of life. My son had this and I was already getting scared until I remember this lecture. And then just like that, at six months, everything resolved on its own. But if not descended by six months, you have to refer to a specialist. Uh, they can do surgery. Surgery is called orchiopexy, orchiopexy, to move the testicle down into the scrotum. It could be one or both testicles uh, that haven't descended. You certainly want to make sure you're examining the patient in a warm room after a warm bath because when it's cold, things shrink, <laughs> right? You want things to be relaxed. It is important to remove testicles from the abdomen to reduce the risk of testicular cancer and perform orchiopexy within the first year of life. Newborns in gonococcal ophthalmia neonatorum. This is uh, transmitted through contact of the eyes with the infected genitalia secretions from a person with gonorrhea. It usually happens during delivery. It is a serious condition that can cause blindness. Symptoms would be injected or red eyes with just charge two to five days after birth. So prophylactically, we apply topical 0.5% erythromycin ointment immediately after birth. And you certainly want to make sure you test and treat the mother for STIs before, during, after, any time. If you're preparing to take the ANCC or the AANP exam and found my teaching style helpful, I welcome you to check out my website, thecohenreview.com. Find the link in the description below. The Cohen Review offers 
lectures covering all tested systems, GI, derm, psych, cardiac, with key material to pass the NP boards. You will not be overwhelmed with unnecessary information. We also offer a growing question bank, free blogs, live webinars, and private coaching. I am here to support you into becoming a certified nurse practitioner. So please do yourself a favor, click the link below, and let me give you the tools you need to pass the exam.